I'm Ken Hansen from AWS Amazon Web Services and with me today is Jason Fulgham, 13 year veteran of AWS. We're here to give you a brief overview of .NET on AWS and the great stuff you can do with it. So what do we have for today? We're going to take a tour through AWS development uh, for .NET applications today and we're going to highlight some of the things that all .NET developers should know about. We're going to focus first on some application hosting options, and then we're going to take a little bit deeper look at some libraries and developer tools for .NET, too. Yeah, I love that we have a complete set of hosting options, all the way from VMs into the serverless space, modern applications, containers, and everything in between. We've got a lot of strong options available for .NET developers to host their .NET code on AWS. Uh, I think the, the best ones for us to talk about are some of the higher level services, such as AWS Elastic Beanstalk for web applications. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk is our fully managed platform for running web applications, whether it's .NET Core applications or traditional .NET Framework web applications. And they're both supported beautifully in Elastic Beanstalk, and you get really good automatic scaling and operational tools nice. built in. Nice. So what do we have if someone wants a little more control? I would definitely recommend checking out some of the AWS container services if you want a little bit more control. Or if you're trying to run any application that's not a web application, then container services are probably gonna be a great fit. You can really run any application in containers. And we also support Linux containers as well as Windows containers. So nice. really, you can do just about anything with AWS container services. And looking towards the future, how do we handle with the whole modern application? I think one area that's really, really exciting in computing right now is serverless. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can run your whole application, uh, you can run microservices, web applications, without ever having to worry about the server infrastructure underneath. It lets you focus on your application and not worry about uh, everything else that's in it. Oh, I kind of like that. Right. It makes it a lot nicer. Let's look at some code. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've got an ASP.NET web application here running in Visual Studio. Get this pulled up. And we've got the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio installed. That gives us a bunch of nice goodies for working with our applications. So we're going to get deployment support that we'll see a little bit of. And we'll also see some project templates uh, that make it really easy to get started building .NET apps with AWS. So over here, we've got the ASP.NET application. And we've already got this deployed to a container running on AWS. And this is really as easy as opening the context menu here and selecting to deploy our application to an AWS container. And you can see that we can just as easily deploy this same solution to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, like we mentioned before. So now let's take a look at how we can add some serverless functionality to our application. We're gonna go up here to the new project wizard, and we're gonna add an AWS serverless application for .NET Core. We're gonna add this to our current solution and just extend our project. And then on the next page of this wizard, we see something that I think is a really great feature of the toolkits. These are all these code blueprints to help you get started. This is really a terrific way to explore what you can do with AWS and .NET, and just a fantastic way to get started really quickly. So there's a Hello World style, very simple serverless application, all the way up to a blog API using Amazon DynamoDB. We're just gonna start with this ASP.NET Core web API and add that to our project. And in just a few minutes, we'll have this new project in our solution that we can right click on and deploy to AWS Lambda. So that's really all it takes to get our application deployed to AWS. Uh, the great blueprints helped us get started and uh, a few clicks in Visual Studio and we're deployed to AWS. We have some great .NET tooling. Absolutely. The thing that surprised me a little bit when I first came to AWS was how extensive our Windows expertise is. It makes sense because we've been doing it for what, 11 years almost now. It's just surprising the depth of operational expertise, the breadth of services, all the, the capabilities we have. Absolutely, definitely the strengths of AWS, operational expertise and uh, deep technical knowledge. Great, so we've got lots of compute options. How about uh, libraries and development tools, things to just make it easier to actually access them? Yeah, a wide variety of libraries and development tools available for .NET developers. I think the most important library to know about is definitely going to be the AWS SDK for .NET. This is probably the first thing that you're going to need to get. I would suggest starting with one of our Visual Studio toolkits and the AWS SDK for .NET, and you're pretty much ready to start building your app on AWS at that point. 
The SDK gives you access to every feature in every AWS service, uh, and we launch those on the day of launch. So as soon as a new feature is available, you can go download the .NET SDK and you can start coding against that. So I'm guaranteed a complete substrate across .NET. Absolutely. And then on top of that, we provide additional benefits. That's right. I think that's where it gets really interesting is all these higher level APIs that we build on top of that client layer. So that's where we've taken a lot of the best practices that we've learned in common scenarios and we've encoded those in these very easy to use APIs. So for example, if you want to transfer data with Amazon S3, there is an API that makes that very easy and codes a lot of best practices for getting the most throughput out of your uh, network interface. And there's lots, lots more. There's object mapping for Amazon DynamoDB. And there's also support for AWS X-Ray distributed tracing. Awesome. One of the things I like about this and our approach to it is that so much of it's open source. We really have this desire across all of the SDKs to do everything open source. And over time, we think we'll get there. Absolutely. Yeah, open source is so important to the developer teams and how we work with customers on GitHub. It's, uh, it's also more fun. Totally. <laughs> Community <laughs> matters. So I love our toolkits. <laughs> Me too. Well, what about .NET CLI? Can yeah. I still use my, my tool? Absolutely. I, yeah, the .NET CLI is a really exciting part of .NET Core. It's an indispensable tool if you're doing .NET Core development, of course. And one of the things that I think is really neat about it is its extensibility model. So we can actually extend the functionality of the .NET CLI and provide AWS specific functionality. And that's what we've done. So you saw the deployment support in Visual Studio Toolkit earlier. That exact same code is actually shared in our .NET CLI extensions. So anything that we showed earlier, deploying to containers, deploying serverless applications, deploying to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, you can do all of that using the same code through .NET CLI as well. Oh, well, that's great to have, yeah. that, have that equivalence going on. Thinking of CLIs, of course, I spent 15 years helping to create <laughs> PowerShell. So it's one of my favorites. Do we have anything for the PowerShell user? Very strong support for PowerShell. We talked about the .NET SDK. Everything that's available in the SDK is available in the PowerShell API as well, which is awesome. Day of launch, we always have those updated. The other great feature for PowerShell that I think people are going to be excited about is our serverless PowerShell support. So you can run any PowerShell commandlet on AWS Lambda fully serverless. You know, I remember when we actually first open sourced PowerShell 6.0, we brought Steve Roberts, the developer on AWS, over mm -hmm. to actually demo the AWS commandlets here, they were such, such an enthusiastic early adopter. <laughs> so Jason, are there any final tools, any more tools that we should just think about? Yeah, last but not least, I hope that uh, certainly any professional software team is going to be thinking about how they build and release their software in a repeatable, Absolutely. reliable way. And we have great solutions for .NET developers in AWS. So AWS Code Pipeline, AWS Code Build, AWS Code Deploy. All these products work together really well and allow you to easily build your .NET Core or your .NET full framework applications and then deploy them to AWS. So the whole CI CD pipeline kind of came Exactly, very seamless. And if you're not using the AWS first party products for your build release, if you're using a third party product, we also support some of those. We have extensions for TFS and VSTS that make it really easy to integrate AWS into your existing tools. That's important to integrate with. Absolutely. I also like how we've got so many open source vendors that have great tooling in this space. So where should I go to learn more? And we've got a brief overview. Yeah. It's been kind of quick, but if I wanted to learn more, where do I go? We've only scratched the surface, so I hope that everybody watching goes to aws.amazon.com slash net. That's our .NET developer hub, and there's tons more information to learn more about developing .NET on AWS, lots more videos, tutorials, links to our .NET developer blog and our Twitter handle, um, and a great place to start learning more about .NET. Thanks for joining us. That's .NET on AWS. Jason Fulgham and I'm Ken Hansen.